we really kind of took inspiration from the camcorder. People used to have camcorders that they would really capture all kinds of moments and they would take those cassette tapes out, they'd put them in when their friends and family would come into the house and they would share them with a small group of people. How exactly does that work? So when you open up, we open up on the video camera, you can select the individual people you want to share with. So if I select Lori, if I select Krista, whoever I select, only those people will receive the video on their end. They get a notification, they can tune in as it's happening, or they can watch it later. For the person capturing it, it all gets stored in the cloud so it doesn't take up any space on your device, which is something that as people have been sharing more and more video, they end up running out of space on their phone, and so we're trying to solve that as well. You're not the first person to do this, right? Doesn't Facebook have this ability to share with fewer people um, or Periscope? So how do you look at this challenging landscape of everyone trying to figure out yeah. live broadcast, and how do you set yourself apart? I think the thing that we're really trying to focus on is creating an experience that feels intimate and private. And the other platforms you mentioned, they're, they're sort of the the opposite of that. One of the interesting things, and this always happens with technology, you see incredible power and incredible promise, and there are all these ways that Facebook Live can shape a protest and give people access that they wouldn't normally get. And then there's those real news questions, right? Since we've last spoken, there have been multiple murders that have happened live on Facebook. Were you there for the first like real event, like a murder that occurred live on Facebook? I was there, yeah. Very early on, I remember seeing uh, articles about a, a woman that had shared live shortly after getting shot. Wow. Um, and I mean those are heart-wrenching things to watch. Um, and even even being someone uh, you know that worked on the project, um, you know you, you have a lot of mixed emotions about it. And it also puts Facebook in a position of you know, do you guys keep up the video or do you take it down or what standards are there for dealing with these moments? I think that this is one of those things where um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time to really figure out how, you know, what are the right standards or what is the right technology that you need to build to address this type of things. And I mean, you've seen this on all kinds of platforms where when you are building a platform for people, there's a lot of amazing benefits where it's giving people control, it's giving people access, it's giving people um, a power to reach people in ways that they weren't able to before. But at the same time, there's also downsides where you have to think about, okay, well, if we're all figuring out what type of content you create together, let's put some standards in place to make sure that um, this isn't being used for bad things.